All right, yo, what's going on, YouTube? I'm back again. I got another video for you guys. Sorry for the inconsistency, but I'm back, and I got something for you guys. I'm going to just jump straight into this video. All right, so anyways, I did a little YouTube poll, and I was asking you guys what video you guys wanted to see me do next. I said how to mix your beats or how to make guitar beats like Ian Dior slash Juice World, and you guys really want to see how to mix your beats. So that's what we're going to be doing today. By the way, if you're subscribed or if you're new to the channel, make sure you check out my community post. I'm always posting there for like videos and stuff like that just to get ideas from you guys, just to keep videos going and stuff like that. So keep watching it. All right, so for this video, I'm going to try and break it down into three steps. So I already got this beat laid out, like everything's finished, but it's completely unmixed, unmastered and everything else. So I'm going to break this. So you guys basically want to know how to mix and master and I'm going to show you, I'm going to explain it as best I can. I'm not a professional audio engineer, so take it with a grain of salt. But basically the way I come at a beat when it's finished every time I'll, so I'll lay it out Well, I guess before anything there's something you got to understand which is gain staging So basically this is this is the volume. So if you're an FL studio This would be this knob for example. So if you're pushing this knob It's pushing more volume into the mixer. So for example, if this knob is at default right here and your 808 is only hitting at say minus three decibels then you're, you're not clipping at all there's no there's no virtual clipping so it should be clean but say you push this all the way up and your 808 even though the mixer track is below zero decibels your 808 is gonna be pushing past zero decibels causing it to clip virtually so that's like a basic idea of gain staging and correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, that's what I believe it is. So I'm not going to go too in depth into that, but go ahead and do some research on that. Cause that's like super important. I'm making your beat sound cleaner. All right. So after that quick little overview of gain staging, we're going to jump straight into the next part, which is mixing. This is probably the most important part. Basically what mixing is, is just getting everything to sit well together. Everything. So all your drums, all your perks, your hi-hats, your open hats, and your melodies all to sit well together. And everything sounds like it. It's played like a real instrument, you know? So usually what I would do to level my beats, I'd go to the loudest part. So I know this part right here or this part is the loudest part. So this beat actually has an 808 switch up. So here's the first 808 and then it goes to a spins and then the spins and a kick. So I'm actually gonna mix the first part, which is just like a, uh, it's like a Pierre Bourne 808, my bad. So I'd loop this eight bar part right here and I'm gonna take every single mixer track and bring it all the way down. And then I'll start with the 808. So I usually have my 808s hitting at minus three decibels. I never really go over that just because it just it t your 808 tends to get too loud and it'll create a muddy mix. So I'm gonna try and bring this knob up until it hits minus three. So that's about perfect. It's hitting right at minus three decibels, just where I want it. So now I would usually go to the clap or snare. So for your clap or snare, I don't really have a range for where I want that to hit. Usually I'll just go wherever it sounds nice. I mean, for example, some songs you want a loud clap, some songs you want a real quiet clap. So I'm gonna just bring this knob up until I hear what sounds right. All right, and then after the clap, I would usually do any perks or sometimes a hi-hat, but for this one, I'm just gonna do the perks first. So I got a perk right here. And same thing as the clap. It could go either way. You might, I might want this perk to be really loud and stand out, or I might want it to just sit back in the mix and it's kind of just like a little accent. So we'll see what sounds good. That sounds about good to me. And another super important part for perks and your hi-hats, a very important part to your mix is panning. So this can make your mix sound wider or way more narrow, which is up to you how you want it to sound, but I think I'm gonna have this, this perk right here just go a little bit to the left. So then I'm gonna go to this perk right here, same thing as the other one.
And then I got this third perk right here. And same exact thing. I'm gonna level it until it sounds right. So next I'm gonna do the open at. All right, then finally, I'm going to do the hi-hat, and that's going to be the whole portion of the drums. And for your hi-hat, usually what I do is just, I mean, really same thing as any other drum. Just bring it up until it sounds right. But I usually like my hi-hats a little louder, just personal preference. Some people like them quieter. I personally like them louder. All right, so as you can tell right there, at, when I brought that hi-hat in, it kind of overtook all the perks, so I had to bring them up a little bit more, So, which is a common thing with mixing. Sometimes you'll add an instrument that might just overtake and make all the other, other instruments sound a little bit quieter. So mixing, it's a process of just making sure everything sounds good together, and it's really a process that you're just going to have to keep learning and wait until you have the ear for it. All right, and one of the way, so the way I mix is I bring the melody in last once all of the drums are done. And the way I do it is I just pretty much, it's the same as everything else. You bring it up until it sounds right. You don't want your melody sounding louder than your drums, but you want it to sit like right, right in the background. All right, and then I got one more tip for your melodies, by the way, before we start. So you may have seen some videos on YouTube teaching you how to mix saying just throw some EQ on there and cut all the lows out. This isn't something you always want to do. Sometimes you'll cut the lows out and it'll, it'll ruin the melody. Honestly, some melodies you might not even have to add an EQ, but for this one, there's a lot of bass, and I just found that it sounded a lot better without the 808 clashing with the low end of that melody. So like I said, mixing, it's, you gotta, it's just play by ear. You just do what sounds right. You don't got to follow some formula. There's no formula to making your mix sound good. All right, so now I'm going to just bring the melody up. I'm going to bring this knob up until I think it sounds right. All right, so again, like I was saying before, I brought in this melody and it kind of started to drown out some more of the drums, so I had to bring them up a little bit more. And I also decided to cut a tiny bit out at 251 hertz and then raised it just to bring in that sound a little better at uh, 488. All right, so that part is sounding good to me already. So what I would do next is I go to this next part and I already have my second 808 set at the same mixer track. And this is where you're gonna use gain staging so I have this 808 set already to hit at the same point, just about minus three decibels. So if I solo this 808, it should be hitting right at minus three. Just tiny bit above minus three. So everything should pretty much already be mixed how I want it. I'll just let you guys listen to the second part. All right, so and then there's this third section which just has the kick come in, so I'm just going to mix that with the 808. So what I'm going to do is solo the 808 and the kick and just drag it up until it sounds like it's hitting correctly. All 
All right, so honestly, that doesn't sound too good to me, but I'm just going to see how it sounds with everything because it might sound a little bit better. So that's actually hitting really well. I actually like how that's sounding. But in recent times, you may have seen the video of Kenny Beats saying sidechaining is dead. Now, the thing with this is if you sell a beat and you give the track outs, to an engineer, the engineer is going to sidechain the kick to the 808. It, it, it's bound to happen. That's just how engineers are nowadays. Most engineers are, are going to do it no matter what. But if you could get your kick in 808 to sound good without sidechain, I mean, then there's really no point. I mean, like like this mix already is sounding good in my opinion, but I'm going to show you guys how to sidechain just in case, because sometimes your kick won't hit right with the 808. So what you're going to want to do is go on your kick and right here, is where you could side chain your kick to your 808. And so it's already side chained. So here, I'll, I'll disconnect it real quick. But you would go on your kick and right click where the 808 is, this button right here, right click and click side, side chain to this track. Then you'll go and add a fruity limiter. You wanna bring the ceiling all the way up and all these envelope knobs all the way down so it doesn't mess with your 808. Then go to the comp tab. And this side chain part right here, you bring it up to one, that'll be your kick. And then you're going to play with these six knobs right here. So the first knob you're going to want to play with is a ratio. Usually I bring it to like two to one. Third knob is the knee. I usually have this at around 50%. And then the threshold is going to be how much it's actually going to make that kick go down in level. Which I usually have pretty high. But what I do is I'll have the release super fast. So it, when that kick hits, the 808 ducks a shit ton but then comes back up right away. So you don't even notice the difference in volume, but there's no clashing. So let's see what this sounds like. I'm gonna solo the 808 and the kick. So yeah, that sounds a little bit better. I'm gonna bring this release up just a tiny bit more and threshold up. And as you can see, if you look at the 808, when, the, when it hits, you see a reduction in volume right away. So that was too much. You can kind of hear the bottom, bottom. You don't want that at all. So I'm going to bring the threshold down and I'm going to bring the release back up. All right, there we go. So that sounded good to me. There really wasn't necessarily a reason to sidechain this because it's already sounding pretty good, but it'll still help a little bit. So let's hear the, the entire mix right now. All right, so as you can tell, that's hitting like super hard. So we're gonna move on to the next step now, which is your master. So my master channel, all it is is a Fruity Soft Clipper usually and then a little bit of EQ. But I, so when I open FL Studio, I have a, uh, a preset to just have the, the soft clipper on the master, which is something you're always gonna wanna do. But my actual master chain is right here. It's literally pretty much the same thing. Only difference is there's this EQ, which I just boost the highs by 2.6. And then I'll adjust the rest of these knobs to my liking if I need so. I'm gonna reset some of these. Uh, so there we go. And then there's this EQ right here, which just cuts. 20 hertz of the low end, which is just energy that you can't really audibly hear. It kind of brings some mud out of your mix, if you could even notice it. So one of the biggest aspects to mastering, which I feel like a lot of people don't really know or notice, is mastering isn't making your beat just louder. It's adding, it's volume control, it's adding filters to your master, it's, it's adding effects to build suspense and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you guys what I would do just to make some of the, some parts of the beat sound a little better. So I already know right here, kind of like right when the first drop is, I'll let you listen to it. I want something to like build in that like a, like some kind of whoosh. So usually what I do is I'll take a kick. So I'll just go into my kit right here. 
Oh, and by the way, all the drums I used in this beat are from my kit. So if you guys are looking for some new drums to buy, go ahead and check the link in the description. I got a drum kit out, tons of sounds. I mean, this thing is just stacked with sounds and it's only 10 bucks. So go ahead, hit that link in the description and cop that. But anyway, so what I'll do is I'll take a kick right here. Got to zoom in so you can see it better. I'll track it to a mixer channel. I'll just bring it up to zero. Add a soft clip around it just to make sure it doesn't clip. Reverse it, bring the volume all the way up. And you set this right in front of the drop. Make sure you turn stretch off right here and then you're gonna wanna take off this little portion. And then let's listen to that now. You might need headphones to hear this but it'll add like a little like, it'll build a little bit of suspense right before the drop. All right, so yeah, I like how that sounds. That's good, that's good for the first drop. But like I said, there's three sections, there's an 808 change, and then the kick comes in. So I'm definitely gonna want some effects right here. So one of my favorite effects is this one right here. Or my bad, it's actually this one. So shout out to Synchro, because it's actually from his kit, but I'll show you guys how to use this. So bring, uh, you'll bring it in right here. And same thing, you're gonna wanna go right before the next drop and just drag it to where it sounds good. So I'm gonna track this out again. Make sure this mixture track is at zero. This isn't gonna clip, because I know it's pretty quiet. I'm gonna bring the volume all the way up. And let's just see here, and let's just hear how this sounds. Also a little too long. So I'm gonna turn stretch on right here. Hold Alt on my keyboard, this'll uh, do like the uh, zero crossing thing, so you could drag it anywhere without without it uh, hitting the lines. I explained that terrible, but you know what I mean. And I'm just gonna drag it shorter and make sure it is on auto. And I'm gonna make this louder, and I'm also gonna pitch it down because it seems a little too high pitched. All right, perfect, that's exactly how I want that. I might make it a little bit louder actually. Go into this knob just to get some extra volume. And I'm also gonna go in here and add reverb just so it just doesn't cut off right away. There's a little bit of a tail. Perfect, and then for this third drop where the kick comes in, this is where the beat gets a lot harder. So I think what will sound good is literally just having both of these effects right here. So let's hear how that sounds. Like I said, that sounds really good, perfect. So, and then a few more things I wanted to do. I'm gonna have this 808 cut out right here and also the hi-hat, let's hear how that Perfect, so that's that's pretty much all I would do for this beat, honestly. I'm liking how everything sounds so far. So usually, what up, Q? since I have these effects right here and they aren't carrying over, what I would do is just delete this part. Duplicate it, cut this part out because I don't want it in the second half, and duplicate it a third time. Then I'll have this melody carry over for one extra bar. Go to the master channel, right click, create automation clip. Sorry, it's all the way up in that tab right there. Bring it right here. All right, and there we go. I mean, that's pretty much it. That's how I'd mix my beat. Showed you guys a little sneak peek on how to master, and I gave you a little little tiny overview of side chaining, or not, uh, well, side chaining and uh, gain staging. So if you guys learned anything from this video, please hit that like button, leave a comment, tell me what you learned, or tell me, tell me something, you know? And also hit that sub button. I'll play a little snippet of this beat after the video. 
But if you guys want to hear the whole thing, it's going to be a, it's going to be on my other channel. So hit that link in the description. But that's all I got for you guys right now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.